All right, guys, this is the sixth part of the sample mounting and polishing tutorial. On this one, we'll be looking at how to polish the longitudinal cross section. Now, these are more complicated, and I apologize for the video if it's a little, a little confusing, but uh, hopefully it can give you an idea for you to make your own uh, polishing procedure for longitudinal cross sections. Let's see what I have. Okay, so what we have here is my three samples. They are ready to go into my uh, the vibrational polisher. They're looking great, but I won't do these yet. I won't put them there yet. First, I want you guys to remember that we're still doing these two samples right here. They're bigger. Uh, they're longitudinal cross section. Now that's a whole different game. In a transverse cross section, in a in a, in a cross section where you have a pretty long sample inside the conductament here you don't have to worry about how much you take off you just go and do as many steps as you want and uh, as long as you get rid of the scratches you can you can overdo it no problem in this case you can't overdo it if you overdo it you're, you're done if you if you polish past uh, the radius of your little wire in here the wire is just gonna fall off and and you're done uh, you have to prepare a new sample and that's really annoying so you really have to keep track of how much you take off and the way you do that is just you measure um, you uh, you want to measure the sample as you as you are taking off material you want to measure how tall the puck is and measure it after after you polish and then you you keep track of how much you're re removing until you you stop probably right before if these wire these wires are actually 0 0.8 uh, 0 0.8 millimeters in diameter so I want to stop before half of the diameter or the radius I want to stop at 0.4 not really at 0.4 because that's borderline almost losing your sample so I would probably stop around 0.35 or something like that before I want to get a really nice good cross section of your sample, a longitudinal cross section, trying to go down the middle as much as I can, but not too much because then I'll lose my sample if I go too far. So uh, these were epoxy again and also bigger. So uh, they're, they're not going to fit in these little holes. So I'm going to take this off and put this bigger one right here. And same thing, rotate this, straighten it, all right. So uh, the first thing you notice is, well, the, the back of these pucks are not, it's not perfectly flat. It's got, it, because this used to be a liquid, when we poured it, the meniscus made these, these little annoying edges. So I want to take these off. So I, I will first grind the samples upside down to flatten the back of them. Uh, and and I, actually, I don't want to do that too, uh, if I use a coarse, a, a very coarse sandpaper and I use a lot of force I run into the risk of them not being perfectly uh, flat they, they if you add too much force they're, they're they tend to uh, not be completely straight because there's too much force and there's too much too many things going on and that may not have a perfectly uh, transverse cut of, on, the, on the puck so uh, what I'm going to do is about uh, one or two minutes at 400 with five pounds. That should take care of the back of the puck. That's why I want to uh, I want a smooth back, but I want to most importantly I want a straight back. I don't want this to skew in any way because then it's probably going to skew this at the front, and and it's, it, you don't want uh, your sample your polishing plane to be any uh, to be off your the plane of your strand or your or your wire because then you're just not going to get a perfect longitudinal cross section and that that's 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 a trick of a longitudinal cross section it's really hard uh, so the the key to getting a really nice trans longitudinal cross section is to do small steps with not that much force so you really control what you're removing and and you can uh, know you can uh, you don't run the risk of removing too much on one side and too little on the other one. This machine is actually very good in to, to, it does a very good job as to not let the samples move too much. It doesn't let them wobble in here too much. But if you add too much force, 
they might uh, get polished on one side on 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 one side of the puck than the other one. So you want this to be a perfect flat cut. So let me take care of the back again. As I said, it's going to be a. I'm going to try a 400 grit for about two minutes with five pounds of force, not too much. And once I have the pat the back uh, of the pucks ready, I'll, I'll I'll start polishing. All right. Okay. So um, all right. I have my samples here. I've done, it only took a minute uh, at 400 to take the back off, and they're pretty flat. I mean, if if you uh, I don't see any uh, skew top or bottom, so I think this is great. With the front, the the front of the puck is fine. The back of the puck is fine. I've chamfered the edges. You can see here. I've chamfered these edges. Uh, the same goes for this one. Another thing that I've done, and I hope you can see this, I've labeled the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. So this is because I want to keep track of the measurements. Um, let me open my spreadsheet over here, and what you have is this spreadsheet actually measures your sample. So you have uh, you start your starting thickness at the top, the bottom, the left, and the right, and it averages this. The spreadsheet, uh, and you can find this spreadsheet in the Z drive under Metalography, or you can ask somebody where it is. Uh, but you see here, I have the same here: top, bottom, left, and right. Just, so you grab your caliper and you measure this. So I want to measure the thickness of the puck. The top. I go here top and this is upside down for you but this is 16.6 all right so I'm gonna put right here my top is 16.6 and then my bottom is 16.5 pretty close okay 16.5 the left 16.5 and you want to to okay so I don't know if you've used a caliper before but you you want to, let's say I'm measuring the left over here, so I put it on on the edge of the sample and I wobble the sample a little bit to make sure I'm actually at the shortest distance because if you are anything like diagonal, like this, you're going to get a higher number, now 17, but you want the shortest distance, so you want to wobble your sample a little bit, make sure and push on the caliper slightly so you get the lowest number, which should be the actual uh, height of the puck, in this case 16.5 for the left, 16.5, and the right, it would be nice if you always measure in the same spot, because if you move slightly to the, to, to, slightly around the puck, it might be, there might be bumps or things that give you a different reading, so 16.5 as well, it was actually pretty, a pretty even puck, maybe the top, what would happen to my top measurement over there? Yeah, 16.6 or 5. Uh, a second measurement gave me 16.5. Again, statistical error. Uh, I'm going to go for 16.5 just because I I like the fact, I like to think that my sample is actually perfectly flat. In this case, it could be. So I'm only going to keep track, just for the video's purpose, I'm only, and so I don't take too much time off of you, I'm only going to keep track of the height of my second puck and hope that the, the, uh, the, the, number 36 is also grinding off at the same rate. It should be because there's the same amount of material here. So I'm, I'm going to keep track of only puck number 37 in this sheet. And I've already started with my, my top, my bottom, my left, and my right. Okay, and one thing that is important about transverse cross and longitudinal cross sections, I don't want to do anything of higher grit than, um, or, or larger grit than, 600. If I do 320, it's probably going to eat through my sample. If I do 400, it will might as it'll probably eat through my sample as well. <clears throat> so I want to do. I want to start with 600. And you can see in my spreadsheet, I have here the step. I start with 600, and uh, I've checked here the the values that I want. And I do uh, 600. Yes, that's the grid that I want. Silicon carbide. Yes, I'm going to do 200. Eh, I'm going to go to 250. 
I want for it to go for a minute, and I want a really low force. Before we were doing 10 or 5, now I'm doing, I'm going to go for 2, I don't want to risk it. And once I add in the new values here, it will calculate how much uh, is the new average, how much has, was ground on the step, and how much it ground so far. So let me do that. I'm going to take my 600 paper, forgot about it. Let's go, let's do one and let's see how much it takes off and see if we want to redo that or or if we're halfway through the sample might as well just stop. I don't think this will get me halfway through the sample. I'm doing very low force. Hopefully you won't eat through. I don't think so. Alright, so I get this what? The usual, you know the drill. Press these two buttons. Alright these two right here and set them free okay so here we have our sample and we wipe this off a little bit and as I suspected we haven't gone through much of our sample uh, still uh, I don't think that's the full uh, thickness of the strand but uh, let's see how much we took off. We know they're 0.8 millimeters in diameter, so, and so we want to take off around 0.4 uh, millimeters. So I go with my sample puck 37, this one right here, and I measure my top. So I go here, put it on, on the same spot, hopefully the same spot that I was using for before, 16.4, all right. That would be really convenient and if it actually if it takes a millimeter at the time, because then I can do four steps and maybe three and a half. 16.4 is taken off a very good rate. 16.4. Left. 16.0, oh, 16.3. So my samples are already starting to skew a little bit. That's alright. It happens. 16.4. Okay, so you see on the sheet what happened is, first of all, it colored these cells. So these cells are now colored. So that, that's, that's actually the part of the, the, the sheet, how it works. So you can keep track of which of, of the steps that you do. And uh, down here we have the, the different, also the steps for the diamond pad and the steps for the suspension at 6 micron and at 3 micron and 1 micron. But what the sheet does is, is you don't have to do every step that's here. So let's say we want to stop at this, this uh, we want to move to, to uh, 8 micron again, and we got these values, let's say 16.2. Uh, it fills in and it takes the, la it averages this one and it uh, takes the last step. It jumps all those steps, that it, all these steps, and it goes to this one and, and sub subtracts. 16.38 minus 16.20 and there you go you remove this much okay but uh, that's just you, you can explore the sheet later on what I just did is just one sample one step and it colored it so I so it reminds me that we're at this point and we've ground 0.13 so we probably want to do uh, another another two the steps at 600. So I'll do two more and I'll see you later on this sheet after I've done those two more. Okay, so look at what happened. So I did my first step, you saw it before, where I took uh, 0.13 and I did another step exactly the same and I took a lot less. Um, so that was interesting. My guess is because uh, of course, at the beginning, you're only if you if you think that if you think think of it as if you're grinding on uh, a circle. Uh, at the beginning of the circle, you start taking off very little material, but as as you get closer to the center of that circle, you're removing more material. Therefore, you have to put more force to remove the uh, uh, the same depth. So I think that's what's happening here because these two this other two steps they remove very little 
So I'm going to up the force just a little bit for the next step. I'm going to do, uh, instead of two, I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, I'm just going to go for four. Oops. A little lag there. But yeah, I'm going to do two, uh, four pounds of force for this uh, last step, and let's, let's see what happens, all right? Okay, so on my sample here, now I'm going to measure it after this step of four pounds. So 16.3 for the top, 16.3 for the bottom, 16.2, whoops, hold on, 16.2 for the left, 16.3. I'm still not removing as much. I mean, I, I've only taken a total of 0.23. I'm gonna have to take it up another notch. And I'm running, running out of room here, so, because um, next, uh, we, I could add uh, more, more of these, but then the formulas would be all messed up. So, uh, so what I'll do, is I'll just uh, keep adding. So now I'm gonna do five pounds of force. And depending on whether I do one, two, or three of these steps, I'll just keep adding what the minutes were. For now, let's do one and I'll measure. If I don't like those numbers, I'll just go ahead and do another one. And I'll, I'll show you guys what they look like once I get to the point where I want them to, uh, for where I want to stop and move on to the next step, all right? Okay, so I've done already uh, one, two, three, four, five, five steps of different forces, different, uh, uh, well, same times, but different forces. And I've finally gotten my samples and they look all right. Uh, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but you can see a lot of the structure now. Um, now, under the microscope, they, they look good as well. So let me show you in the spreadsheet what, uh, what happened. Uh, so I told you before we were at, the first step that we did was at uh, one pound of force and it took quite a, a good amount of material because uh, it was just the, doing this, the, the corners, or it's not the corners, there's no corners in the circle, but it was doing the first part of the circle, and remember these strands are cylindrical of the cylinders, and then the next two steps they weren't that good, 2.2, 0.02 right here, and a total ground of 1.17, not happy with it. And then I had to bump it to four pounds. It wasn't it was good either. And then I bumped it to five pounds. And in this case, I actually had to do two, as I told you in the last scene. But uh, the total removed right now is, is 0.3, which I'm okay with it because I looked at the strand and it looks a little bit like this. This is the longitudinal cross section. And, and if you, uh, this is the same wire that we were looking at earlier. So if you're looking at, well, not the same, but a similar one, but if you're looking at it, and you let's say I'm, I want to cut along this plane what you should be seeing is uh, some copper in the edge maybe some in this in the center and some at the end and I don't know if that's a uh, computer froze oh there you go uh, that is somewhat what we're seeing I don't know maybe maybe we're missing that core in the center that that could mean that we are still a little far from from that center of the strand we want to be at the center um, so I'm going to do one more step at, uh, at the same 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 thing we just did one more step at 600 at five pounds so I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and bump this up to three minutes now uh, and you can see well you can you can understand the spreadsheet how it works now we, we start with something trying to feel how much we're removing and then it's a couple of tries each sample behaves differently in fact I was measuring the, the other puck here and it, it also removed a different amount uh, but I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more and then I'm gonna do exactly the same other steps that I did for the transverse cross section. I'm going to do the, the, the diamond pad for five minutes. I'm actually doing doing two step of those five minutes and five minutes. I could just say ten here, but whatever. I just have two fields here, so I can measure both and how much each one of them remove. And then I will go not the third one. I won't do the third one. I'll go for a suspension for uh, maybe maybe I'll do five and another five and then three microns and one micron finally. Okay, so you'll see what the spreadsheet and the pictures look like 
in the next uh, scene that I'll record. But for now, I'm telling you that I'll do one more silicon carbide, then the diamond pad twice, then the diamond suspension twice on the sixth, then six, then three, and then one. And we'll see what they look like. Uh, but what this sheet did is actually it helped me it helped me to keep track of how much was I removing, make sure that I didn't go too much because I would lose my samples. So that's that's pretty much it. Um, the samples look all right. At least I haven't lost any of them. That's that's always a good thing. Uh, so I'll see you after the samples are completely polished and we can talk about putting them into the vibrational polisher. All right. Okay, so we've done all the steps and um, uh, the sample is looking good. So let's just recap a bunch of silicon carbide at um, 600 and then I jumped to the diamond pad, I did two, actually one for five minutes, the other one for three minutes, uh, all, both of them at five pounds of fours. At this point I kind of stopped measuring I, or I got lazy because um, we're, we're not removing that much. So I did two of those and Oh, my computer's frozen again. Come on, come on. You can do it. There you go. Now, uh, six microns. Uh, I did two at six microns. And then, oh God. Okay, three micron, one micron. I Again, here I stopped measuring. I just kept adding the same value just to color the cells. Uh, to keep track that I actually did that. Um, so uh, the, sh the, the, the sheet colors the steps that you did. So that's kind of nice. You can always improve this sheet if you want. I, I didn't have much time to do a really nice sheet uh, with all kinds of varying um, cells, but it's fine. Um, it works for what I wanted it to. I just I basically what I wanted was not to get o go over uh, 0.5 and I got to 3 point uh, get to 3 uh, 0.35 uh, I don't know again I was using a caliper that only had one decimal point so it could be within the error but when I actually looked at the um, at the wires let's take a look let me go to uh, the Z drive um, ASC users Charlie uh, temp image transfer and I have uh, what did I do oh longitudinal okay so I took the picture earlier that you saw where I had um, this okay so at 8 micron one of the samples looked like this now but I'm looking for yeah this one this is the same wire that we first looked at and okay so that's a that's at 8 micron and this is I actually you can use some of the tools in the in the oops in the um in the microscope to measure so right now I have a 772 microns from here to here and remember the diameter of these wires is 800 so I'm pretty close actually even though maybe there was a lot of error when I was measuring the puck and that 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 usually happens but I think this is the best way to know how close you are to the middle of the sample by just actually measuring its diameter and I'm pretty close I don't probably don't want to go any higher than this so that's when I started going to the higher higher smaller um, steps smaller di uh, particle steps uh, because I wouldn't be removing as much and uh, again and here's the final one after after eight micron, six micron, two six micron, uh, three micron, one micron. Here's what I end up with. It's it's really nice. It's looking good. You see all the structures. Uh, everything's looking. Uh, this the, the funky shapes are, are elongated like this, and some not so much because this is twisted. This strand. The what you uh, what you see here. Oh come on. Okay, uh, the, these filaments are twisted, so it's it's looking good to me. I think the, it, this is ready for the vibrational polisher. So let's go and let's go to the vibromet, and I'll tell you how that is done. I'll put all the samples in.